everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be doing a complete iArt book overview. Now this is for 2023. I did some older versions that were actually pretty popular. A lot of people have viewed them but I've gotten a lot of different questions and I recently looked at the app in the app store and I saw that there were several updates, several things that have been changed. So I just decided to do a complete overview of my art book. Now, I do want to mention that um, <clears throat> now I do want to mention that this is being done on an iPad. And there is an iPhone version of the app, but it's a little bit different. So this version is for the iPad. Now, if you want me to create a separate video on the iPhone version, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'd be glad to do something like that. All right, let's hop right in. Now, because in my previous videos, I've always struggled with making a drawing for the actual video. I went ahead and just made a drawing here. I drew a realistic eye. A while back using all the built-in brushes for my art books so just a little example this is what is possible I'm sure there's much better possible on this app it has a lot of potential and it's free there is a paid version but you can do this and more with just the brushes that are in that all right let's get started so first you are going to have these two buttons right here this is obviously your undo and redo button very simple very simple to understand. Um, if you make a mistake, you just press the back button. If you decide, oh wait, I did want to keep that brush stroke, then you just go back. It's as easy as that. Now the third button here, this is going to be your opacity. This determines how opaque your brush is. Fourth button is just your brush size. So this is going to determine how big your brush is. Now the fifth button here picks your color. From the colors you have on the screen so if you're making a drawing but you forgot to save one of your colors but you have it on your character or whatever you are drawing all you have to do is grab it and drag it over and as you can see it's displaying the color on the top half the bottom half is the color i've selected currently so if you want to compare it with your color but let's say i wanted this specific gray you let go and your brush is now going to be this color now we're going to click the undo button and you can do this very easily, press it again, go back, I want this darker gray, and you have that darker gray. Sixth button, this is going to be your color. Now, this is cool, this is your brush color, but I love iArtbook and the fact that they give you a bunch of pre-made palettes. Now, you can make your own palette, you can even share your palette, and I will show you how to do that. So here are the palettes that they have uploaded. You're going to have all of these when you download the app. There are a bunch, as you can tell. They've even added some since the last time I've seen it. It just keeps on going and going. These, some of these are definitely new. They've added a bunch of things here. We have Tropics. I like this one, Robin the Hood. <laughs> um, blonde and Blue, Classic Blonde. So we have... A bunch of pre-made palettes here but if you want to create your own palette all you have to do is press the little add button right here and in order to add a color let's say you're, I have this purple color but the color isn't displayed anywhere and I want to save it to come back to it later and I want to add it to my palette so I click the add button like I did before but I go to my palette here click that button and there you have it now you can go make another color if you like that, you can select any other color if you want to keep it in your own palette or if you made it up, like I said, you just add that button right there. So that's how you create your palette and add your colors. Now, if you want to share a palette with somebody, you swipe it to the left and there's going to be either this trash can button, which will erase it. Or if you want to share it, you just press this share button. This is going to take you to a bunch of different things. You can either save to your files, save to Pinterest, Dropbox, make it a PDF, whatever you want to do. And that's it for your colors. Now, if you want to go to your colors, that will give you the color square, the color wheel, and the lines will just give you the basic slider lines if you want to make them darker, lighter, 
I tend to gravitate towards this right here. I just, I like that. I like the way that they show you in the circle which color you have in real time. Moving on, the button above your color button is going to display your layers. So when you click on it, you have all your layers. I use six layers to create this drawing. We have this one, this one, this one. Uh, they're a little bit mixed up, but if you want to drag one to the top or bottom, all you have to do is hold, click and hold, and you can drag it anywhere. Now, if you want to undo those actions, you can press undo and it will fix the layers back to what you had. Now this is actually a background layer and this is super cool because if you just want a solid background color for your background, it will do that for you, which I think is really neat. Now the only thing I didn't like at first when I saw this was the fact that it won't update it unless you let it go. So the only way you're going to know what color it's going to be is from this little circle right here. But when you let it go, it updates it. This button right here displays your brushes. Now there are actually two ways to get to this menu. You can press this right here and find all of the brushes. Now, like I said, I have the free version. So all of these are available for free. We have our wet effects, we have acrylic, pixel art. Now this is also new with the new, with the new update. These are newer brushes. I've never seen these before. So we have horizontal lines the grid. Let's make this brush a little bit bigger. So this would actually be really neat. This is a texture brush. So as you can see, even if you go back over it, it maintains a consistent pattern. This would be neat if you're trying to do some type of overlay. And as I zoom in, you can see it's just a line or a lot more. I have horizontal lines, vertical lines on pixel, one pixel grid, pixel art which is a very, very neat brush. I like this brush. This would be cool if you're making a drawing and you wanted this glitchy background look. I've seen a lot of people go for that recently. So this is one way to get to your brushes. Now, if you want to edit your brush, like you would in Procreate, you pick a certain brush and you click that brush and you click it again. It's going to bring you to a lot of different brush settings. You can go to your stabilizer, this is just going to give you all of those extra touches to the brush. Now this may take some studying and some time just to learn what every slider and every button means, but if you are, but if you have a lot of experience with this, especially in Procreate, then you're going to know just what these things mean. Now the second way that I was mentioning of now the second way you can access your brushes are actually right up here. And this I love because you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven brushes just saved to the top. So if for some reason you needed seven brushes for one masterpiece, you don't have to click and keep moving it back and forth, back and forth, remembering which one you used. You can just have them preset up here. And if you want to change it, you click one, certain one, press it again, and you can change that one as you see it updates it up there in that little square. If I were to go to this one and I wanted to change it, you would click it, click it again, go to any one, and it will update it up there. So you can have these saved and you don't even have to bother going back and trying to find that pencil or that brush that you were using before because you now have them back and forth. You can switch. Um, in order to change each unique brush color, you can either access it from here or you can access it from here. So this brush is now automatically set to this pale yellow color. So if I switch to this brush, this brush, this brush is still in black. So I could swap that brush, make that brush pink, and that brush is now set to pink, and only that brush. None of the other brushes are affected. So this, again, is another great way to have your brush preset. This little button up here is your eraser. And if you noticed when I pressed brush and eraser, everything changed up here. This is your eraser brush. And the cool thing with picking a different eraser brush is that it can erase in texture. If you were to, let's go back to brush and select something like this. I'm just gonna show you the texture. 
and I wanted to erase in a texture, I could pick something like this size. If you take the opacity down a little bit, it will erase in that texture, which is really cool because if you're wanting to add texture like hair or something, you can make it small and you could do a bunch of different wispy lines. There's a lot, a lot that you can do with this. But as I mentioned, but as, but as with the brushes, you can have preset eraser brushes as well. Now this right up here above the eraser brush is super, super cool. This is one of the new things that they've added with this whole 2023 update as far as I know. I just remember reading about it, which was another reason I wanted to update this video. This is the blur brush and this is super, super cool. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So let's go back to our brush and I'm just going to create two colors and place them. Let's say I wanted to blend these two colors right here. So you can put your colors side by side. And now there, there used to be, um, before this existed, people were having a very hard time figuring out how to create gradients such as this. But now all you have to do is go to this click your any of your brushes now you can again select any brush here to do so but i would select i would recommend selecting something like your airbrush and this is then going to become a blur brush so all you have to do let's make this a bit bigger and let's up the opacity and just like that you can create a gradient. Now mine is still a little bit rough, but you can keep going back and forth, back down this way, and you can create a flawless gradient now. Y'all, this actually gets me very excited because this didn't exist last year. A lot of people were complaining about this being an issue, not being able to blur or create gradients. There were a few methods people discovered to help them make gradients, but it still was very, very crude. This is excellent because it does allow you to do something like this. So don't forget, it's this button right here. Now, the very last thing for this app is going to be the more, the options button, which is the three dots up here. This is going to give you a bunch of different things. It's going to give you smudge. It's going to give you blur, which is just going to bring you right back here. Now, I did forget to mention that if you wanted to create a quick fill, let's say you make this circle, but you want to fill it, hold and drag. You can press yes, use bucket tool, and boom, it fills in just like it would procreate. And there is a an absolute seamless fill. This was also a problem before where the colors would create this ugly line, but this is absolutely seamless. Back to the more button. This is going to allow you to save your design. So let's say I drew this eye. I want to save it. Click save. And it's going to ask you if you want to export a time lapse video, copy to an animation, which you can create animations in this app, but we will not be covering that section in this video. You can save this as a PNG with transparency or just a PNG. And that is how you're going to save your artwork to your camera roll. There are many, many more things you can do. Here you can flip your canvas. So if you press that, it's going to flip every canvas and every layer. This is going to give you a reference. So if you press this, it's going to allow you to either upgrade to pro or watch ads. So there are some features you can just watch ads to unlock. But having the references there is basically just going to allow you to select a photo from your camera roll that you saved as a reference and it's going to hold it there. Kind of like what Procreate would do. This button is for settings, so this is going to allow you to change a bunch of different things. If you're left-handed, you can open that up, and that is really neat because it just switches the sides. That's going to switch the sides for you, which is very, very thoughtful of them. If you turn it back, it's just going to switch the panels, so that is a really neat feature. There are more features. You can do dark, light, translucent. That's just going to change the background here if you like one more than the other. Let's go back. Now, as you can see, there are ads and it is playing, but one way to actually eliminate this would be to turn off your Wi-Fi when you're drawing. So all you have to do is just turn off the Wi-Fi. I've just decided to keep it on for this video. 
Now let's press more. This liquify allows you to move things around on the canvas. Obviously a lot of these you can either pay pro or watch. So blur is going to blur things together, create a nice gradient. Smudge is just going to smudge things around. Let's go to a layer where I can smudge just to show you. See, so that's just going to smudge everything. You can press fit and that is going to just bring your canvas back out. So if you were zoomed in and you didn't want to zoom it back out, but you wanted it to perfectly fit to your screen, that's going to do that for you. This is going to allow you to copy or paste. This is going to transform and allow you to shrink or make your layer bigger, move your layer around, anything that you want to do. You can also flip it horizontally. You can flip it vertically. You can rotate it, scale, and warp it. This is going to allow you to just move it anywhere. And that is basically it for this app. It's super useful. It reminds me a lot of Procreate, and I mean a lot, and it is a very useful app. And it's pretty good for the fact that it is free. I know a lot of people use Ivis as their main digital drawing app. However, I really recommend this for beginners. It's a great, great app to get started. Now there's one more detail that, that I did want to mention and a lot of people were having difficulty finding. A lot of people have been wanting to erase their work. So let's say we go back into the library and we have our two works here, but this is ugly. I don't want this one. So how do I get rid of it? You can't press and hold. It just moves it around and repositions it. Take your painting, swipe it left, and you can click and delete it. Or you can duplicate your work. Swipe, delete, delete. Just as a warning, you cannot get back what you erase. So after you erase something, it's just gone. There are a few other really, really neat things that you can do here. You can trace and animate, but for this video, we won't be going into those two. And that is essentially it. iArtbook really is a great digital art app, especially for beginners. If you wanna get a little taste of Procreate without paying the $10 to get the app. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helped. If you have any more questions, just put them in the comments and I will definitely answer those for you. As always, stay artsy and I will see you in the next video.